Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and uh, in one of the last videos I criticized that in this uh, 1990s vintage multimeter um, the amps range was only protected with one of these little glass fuses and I criticized it for that not being the right way to protect your multimeter or your personal safety and that in more modern multimeters or ones with a better protection, these HRC fuses, high rupture capability fuses are used. So today let's uh, just talk about the differences and what makes these HRC fuses much more safe and appropriate uh, for the task of protecting especially the amps range of your multimeter. So, so these uh, standard fuses, if you take a look inside, basically they consist just simply of a wire, nothing more. Sometimes you find them with a sand filled, but usually they are just a clear glass tube with two metal end caps and the current goes through this wire. Now, what are they used for? They are used for protecting your devices in case of fault, but there's a big difference in their operating conditions compared to a multimeter where they are going to protect your amps measurement inputs. So let's uh, take a closer look at how these glass fuses are used in consumer electronics and what's the difference between your the conditions in your multimeter in the amps inputs. So this is a typical application how you use these glass fuses to protect your electronics from any faulty conditions. Let's first of all take a look at the secondary fuse or the fuse on the secondary side of your transformer. Um, if you load starts to draw excess current due to any faulty conditions then your secondary fuse will simply the, the wire inside will simply melt and this gives open circuit and you have no longer any current flowing so no problem at all and the same can happen due to excess current in the on the secondary side of the transformer that you also get excess current on the primary side and you usually have your primary side also protected by such a glass fuse. And I've made a separate video about uh, the rating, the so-called melting integral or in other words the I squared T rating which I will give you a link down below in the comments where it is explained what's the difference between slow blow and fast blow or fast acting and slow acting fuses but in a multimeter we have a completely different situation and let's draw the equivalent circuit of what happens in your amps measuring multimeter so when you do current measuring with your multimeter your test setup usually looks that way you have a, a voltage source, no matter if it's AC or DC. You have your device under test. And then comes the amps input of your multimeter. And inside it, there is first of all your uh, fuse. And then comes the current shunt which is used just to measure the voltage drop over the current shunt to give you the amps and the other input is the common input and that is connected back to your voltage source so here's your multimeter input and if you accidentally have too much current then of course your fuse will blow just as in the protection of your normal loads in a consumer electronics device. So there seems to be no problem at all. But what can happen is 
that you accidentally have another test set up that looks like this. We again have our multimeter inputs, the amps input, the internal fuse, the shunt resistor, but now we connect it accidentally to a low impedance voltage source without any further current limiting. This could, for example, be a mains outlet. So you basically you, you have just measured the voltage beforehand and accidentally now turn your multimeter to the current measurement range and what will happen now? Your mains will, your, your shunt resistor could be only, for example, 10 milliohms. Your fuse will also be in the lower ohms range, let's say 100 milliohms or 1 ohms. And here you have 230 volts now and your mains could for short periods of time give out hundreds of amps and now you can see what happens. This low impedance connection will load your source with an extremely high current in a matter of milliseconds and what happens then with such a glass fuse is the wire inside will instantly evaporate but at the same time arcing will start. Let's take some examples where you know that from personal experience that this is exactly the condition where arcing starts. If you have grown up in the age of incandescent light bulbs, I'm sure you will have experienced once that your incandescent light bulb has failed and what you would expect, it goes open circuit because when an Edison light bulb fades, the same happens as within a fuse. The tungsten wire just breaks at the instant when you turn the light bulb on and you expect an open circuit. But you will have experienced that instead of that, the fuse down in the fuse box comes into action and instead of an open circuit, you get a short circuit. Why? Because when the filament of an incandescent light bulb breaks, the same effect happens as here. You will get arcing and so a plasma channel in the air or in the gas that's inside the light bulb develops. The air or the gas is ionized and a plasma channel has an extremely low impedance. Th think about the thousands of amps that can flow during a lightning also through the plasma channel in ionized air. The same is true for arc welding with electrical welders. The same is true with arc lamps, where first of all you put the two electrodes, the carbon electrodes together, and the moment when you separate them, an arc starts. So it's always the same effect. If you interrupt a flowing current, especially if it's a high current, if you separate the electrodes, or the same effect is when the wire just simply breaks, you will always get arcing. So in our case, in the multimeter, what happens is the fuse instantly, the wire and the fuse instantly vaporizes and then arcing starts in. And this will in the end destroy your whole multimeter. Your shunt will overheat, steam and flames will come out from the inside of your multimeter and if you're unlucky uh, you can even get killed by that and that is also why such a glass fuse will will explode the the glass tube here will simply explode by the pressure of the instant 
arcing and the, the extremely hot plasma that develops will simply let this little thing explode. So for this situation such glass fuses are really the worst you can do. It would be even better to have no fuse at all instead of these type of little glass fuses with a simple wire inside. So in comes HRC fuses, high rupture capability fuses. You can already see from how they look that first of all they don't have a glass tube but a ceramic tube and we will uh, just in a minute open uh, one of these to see what's inside. And the task is that after the fuse wire inside has melted and if then an arc starts to set in that they somehow are able to quench this arc and to stop the current flowing through the plasma. So they have to interrupt the current flowing, not the normal current, but the current in the plasma arc. And that's why they are rated, for example, like, let's say, 10 kiloamps. So that they are able to interrupt a current flowing via arcing of 10 kiloamps even though their basic fuse rating is only 10 amps. If there's a current flowing above 10 amps, then first of all, the wire inside will melt. And if then arcing sets in because you accidentally have connected your multimeter that way to a low impedance source, then they are able, for example, to quench this arc depending on in, in the multimeter uh, fuses are usually between 1 kiloamps and 10 kiloamps. So that's the main difference between these glass fuses where arcing instantly occurs. It lets usually the glass tube explode and there is no way to stop the current arcing, arcing from one electrode to the next while these HRC fuses are designed for stopping or quenching or interrupting, that's why it's high rupture capability, the arc that unavoidably sets in in conjunction with low impedance sources at the input of your amps meter. So let's see if we can open up one of these HRC fuses by taking off the cap. It doesn't seem very easy, otherwise we will have to break them with a hammer. No, I can't open it this way. So finally with some brute force <laughs> I got this thing torn down to pieces or hammered down to pieces. You can see uh, the wire inside which is still intact and what's inside is this sand um, and the filling itself um, that's a little bit of black magic because it's not so super simple just only to fill in a sand to quench the plasma discharge. So there are certainly still some additional chemicals uh, to quench the arcing and the size of the sand grains etc is certainly important. So you can see these fuses are really much more robust and much more appropriate for this fault condition where you just um, have an extremely high current uh, flowing through your fuse which is not the case in normal consumer electronics when you get over currents there. 
So, and the final word, um, there is a difference between arcing with AC and DC currents. When you've got an AC current, there is a good chance that the arc will extinguish itself, and that is when the current periodically drops to zero. And when in that instant all the gas mo molecules that are beforehand ionized can recombine with their electrons, then the plasma channel stops being conductive and the arc just stops. While when you have an arc with a DC current that can sustain itself basically forever and so at least it won't extinguish itself because there are no zero crossings with DC currents. So DC currents are much harder to control and to quench and to stop than uh, an arcing from an AC current. So that was it for today. Um, I hope you liked it. If you found something new or interesting that you didn't know beforehand, then please give it a big thumbs up. And you can, if you want to, support me on Patreon. And hope to see you next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.